Hello, this is Christian. So this is video two or part two of the Laravel tutorial. Now we are going to create a Laravel project. I'm going to install the project inside a folder called Laravel. So uh, make sure you go there and just create anywhere in your drive. And I'm gonna go and go to my command terminal and run Visual Studio Code. Okay, so code space dot hit enter and that will load the Visual Studio code. If you're using PHP Storm, you would type PHP Storm and then do the same thing. All right, so here we are. I'm going to go to the terminal and um, load my terminal here. As you can see, there's nothing here yet. Now, if you do not have Composer installed, if you type Composer and if you don't see anything, then you need to install Composer first. As you can see, I do have Composer already installed. So once you type Composer, hit enter, you can see all these information coming up in here, okay? So these are just all the functions you can use with Composer. Again, Composer is a package manager for PHP uh, frameworks. It's not only used for Laravel, of course, other frameworks as well. So synonymous to the NPM or the Yarn, uh, for that matter. Okay, so you can see that I'm using version 2.3.8 as of today. And if you just wanna see the version, you just type in dash dash version or the capital dash V here will give you that as well. Okay, so um, that is the first thing you need to do. Now, the next thing is you're going to create a project and we use that the Composer to do that for us. So you're gonna type in Composer and the command is create dash project space followed by the um, Laravel uh, slash Laravel. And the name of the project is gonna be whatever it is. So you see here, hello, um, I'll put hello Laravel. That's the name of the project folder, okay? So usually you follow this convention, all lowercase is highly recommended and hit enter. And it might take a while depending on the speed of your system because it's actually you know installing and downloading files as you go. So it might take about half a minute or so, depends. And I'm gonna just let it run here. I'll, I'll pause it and I'll come back when it's done. Maybe about, again, it shouldn't be that long. Okay, it'll be like half a minute or, or about a minute or so. So let me pause it. Okay, here we go, we're done. So again, it's about a minute or a little bit less than that. As you can see, it uh, installed about 72 packages, um, including any of the dependencies and so forth here. Um, we are now ready to go. And now you have a folder called hello-laravel. And now from here on, we need to navigate inside this folder here. If you expand this folder, you'll see a bunch of files here, okay? If you have been working with other frameworks in the past, like uh, Eclipse, I mean, uh, um, uh, Express or Angular React, you should see something similar uh, as, as you will see that a lot more files than other frameworks maybe uh, besides the .NET. Um, so I'm gonna go into that uh, directory. So CD space, space type hello, or just type HE, tab and enter. Okay, I'm now inside here. You can see all these the files here. Now, once you're inside this project, you can access the artisan library or the, the uh, function right here, as you can see in this command here. This artisan here, if you type in like um, maybe artisan list, uh, not that one, just PHP artisan, I guess. It would list a bunch of functions or commands that you can use. Uh, you can see to build uh, clear your views here. Up here, you see some more um, important ones, the queues, we're not gonna do that here. A lot of make functions here, migrate. This is really useful for when you create databases. Uh, maybe we'll do that in a future video. But up here, you have some of the things or components you can create using the make function, okay? So you can make controller, create compo component here, create some events, uh, uh, some exceptions, handling some additional middleware, you migrate your database and so forth, you create your model. So a lot of things are pre-built into the framework. So it would do this very quickly for you as opposed to having you write all these, you know, manually yourself, okay? So that is what this is for. And one of the key uh, functions you can see here is called the serve function. So these are like a higher level commands that you can access directly through the artisan uh, library here. 
So we're going to run the application by using the serve function here. Um, and also uh, these the up and down, you see one down here, one up here. These are also very useful for, you know, putting your application into maintenance mode. So well, let's say you have a live site that's going on or something, and you don't want to, you know, run your site, you put that into maintenance mode by issue this command down, and Laravel will display a message saying that it's currently in, in maintenance. Uh, so that other users don't access it. Until you're ready to go, then you can issue the up command to bring it back up again. Okay, there are ways to run it to get actually get behind, get past this uh, maintenance mode so you can still work into, but um, we're not gonna do that. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and uh, run our code. As you can see, it's full-fledged application. It's running already, ready to go. And you just have to type the command uh, PHP artisan and serve. Oops, I typed incorrectly. No, I'm going to get out of that. Sorry about that. Let's try again. There, there we go. Okay, so it's going to run on this port right here. I'm going to just copy this and run on the browser because it's going to launch my browser in a different location. I don't want that. So I'm going to launch in this guest account here. So here we go. If you see this, then congratulations, you have run or created a Laravel project. Now this is version nine. So the output will be different from the previous version. Um, they have a little bit different in the layout here, but that's not you know, so important. What's important is that this is actually functioning, okay? So right now we are at the root directory. Again, I'm using 127. You can totally change this to just localhost if you prefer that way, okay? It doesn't matter. Um, which is fine. So maybe we'll keep it that is okay. And this is the slash, okay, which is already included in the first um, route. If you try to go somewhere else, like, you know, ABC, okay, you're going to see the error is just not found because we have not created any routes yet, right? So let's go back into the program and explore around Laravel. So I'm going to keep this running, okay? So once you, once you, um, once you run it, you can keep this running as, as it is. You don't have to close it so that you can always just go back to the browser and refresh it. And you can open a new tab over here, okay? So you can do your code in here. So let me go back into that um, tab again. So if I need to install some of the stuff, I can run separately here, all right? So let me collapse this down here, make it smaller and close it completely. And let's look at what we have here. So this is the folder you have here. These are the actual folders created by default. I showed you in the previous video. Um, as you can see here, the app is really important. And inside the app, you have about uh, five, six folders. Five folders here are generated by default uh, in here. And let me cl close this first. So in here as well, at the root level, you have some additional files in there as well. So you see one that here is a composer.json file. This is synonymous to the package.json file and the node environment. It's exactly the same idea. It's just a metadata file that lists some of the really important information about your project. So here you see the name of my project, um, what type it is, the description. These are provided by default already. If you want to change it, you can change it here, OK? The require here means that these are the dependencies that you need, you must have in order to run Laravel. As you can see, it recommends the version eight, right? Um, the required dash dev, these are only used for during development. So because we are doing development, you can add more stuff in here if you want. But again, these are the default dependencies. As you add more and more packages, it will be added into this development. And if you do need them to you know, export out to the final project, then you will add them to the required part here for di distribution. Okay, so just some stuff here. Um, auto load just means that you auto load your, um, your your data and other libraries in here, and so a lot of stuff in here. Okay, so I, I recommend do not uh, make any changes here unless you know what you're doing. Otherwise, you will crash your program. The other one is a package JSON here, similar, very similar, right? As opposed to the application and the compose itself. Another you see here is the Vite. Config.js, it's called Vite, I think it's French. Um, it's a, uh, what do you call, um, it's like a webpack type of program that actually a scaffold is responsible for scaffolding your application 
um, I believe it's a newer one, but it's quite fast. Okay, so level user read as well as view. <clears throat> um, so these are just you know things that over here. The environment that env file here is a list of some global environment key value pairs that you can change or override if you want to. Um, these are also being used in the app folder in other places as well. If you want to access them or include them in your code, you can add them directly in here and then you know uh, access them. So you see here the name of your application. The environment is now set to local. Uh, this is just some base keys make your app unique. Um, debug is true and, and the URL is localhost I can see here, okay? And database is set default to MySQL. If you use a different database system, you wanna come here and modify these and change these here. So again, maybe we'll do that in a later uh, system. Okay, so this is just the environment here. It's also being pulled from this environment, that example as another one kind of looks similar, um, but I think, I think it used the example here to generate this actual environment file. So if you want to change this to your code, change inside the environment, not the example here, right? Now, so when you look inside here, the folders that we'll be focusing most of the time on are the app folder, the um, public folder, resources, and routes. Until we do databases, we're not going to go in here. Config here is usually only you know, when you configure your file, we're not gonna do here. The bootstrap here is not what you think bootstrap is. This is not the bootstrap library for CSS, okay? Bootstrap means, it just means it, it bootstrap your application or your, your, your files or your, uh, you know, um, views and things like that to the browser. So that's what it means. So when you run the application for the first time, you go into, um, if you can see, if you go to the routes folder here, Okay, you will see again four files. This could be different from the previous version or newer version, but version nine has this. In the previous version, I think it was not called web. This is the web route or the API. I think uh, the older version is called routes.php. So if you're coming from a Flask background or Django, this would be like the routes.py, right? Give you all the routes or all the patterns to your website. So in our example here, by default, it gives you one route and using the get protocol to receive a get a request. And as you can see, it has the forward slash as a root directory, and it's going to launch a function. This is the callback function, or also known as a closure, and in this context here, that will return a view to the browser. The view function here returns a view name. This view here is a string of a blade syntax or blade view. Now this welcome here is found inside the resources folder and there is a views folder and there is welcome.blade.php. So notice when we include the view name, we do not include the full name. We're not even the .blade.php, just the first name of that file or I guess all the way to the dot blade, okay? And, and blade will know it. Um, if, you, if you want to run the entire PHP file, you can type it here, but I think it's, that's, you know, defeats the purpose. So the view name, and then after that here, if you wanna pass in data, you can pass in a parameter using the array key value pair, okay? We'll do that in a little bit later. Um, other ways to do it too, not just, this is just, just one way. Okay, so it will load that view. And if you go to the view, uh, welcome blade if you open the file you're going to see that it looks like this okay so if i collapse all of these you're going to see it's just a regular html right from top to bottom it's a complete html5 version here um, you see some blade syntax here the color braces here this is blade syntax also known as mustache tags right and what happens inside the the um, braces here um, is actually an expression. Expression is anything you type, a function that returns some data or some you know, mathematical operations or a string or variable interpolation or anything like that, okay? Uh, here, um, you see some, you know, uh, just some CSS here, styles, it's just inline style, I mean, embedded style here. Um, and then down here in the body of your document, you see, again, more 
blade syntax. The add symbol here is denote that it's a blade syntax. It's an if function. Uh, if and else, you can see here, right? It was structured very similar to a regular PHP uh, if and else. Okay. The only difference I should say is because it's replacing the add symbol with the you know PHP uh, uh, syntax. So you see that here. Um, so down here, this is the logo. I think that's uh, another one here. And the rest are just some other uh, links you see here. Okay, so up here in the head section, which I uh, don't see a lot thing here going on. But okay, so if you want to, you know, load styles or load images or things like that. Now, this is a view, which is you can treat this like a front end as well. Um, and it behaves really nicely in PHP and, and Laravel. You don't have to do any special um, things like you would probably do with um, uh, like uh, uh, Express, right? So if you want to link to uh, a, a image, you would load your images from the public directory, okay? So you see that over here, it is the public folder. Let me open that. And uh, this public folder here has an index.php as well and has a fab icon and so forth. So if you want to add like your own CSS or your JavaScript on the front end, you must place it inside the public directory. If you want to link to a logo or a file or um, a CSS image, then whatever you type here will load, it will look automatically inside the public directory. Okay. So um, for example, I'm just saying, if I have a folder called CSS, like that, right? Inside my CSS, I have my own main.css. Okay, if you want to link, if you want to link that to your blade, right? You will go up here and you would do like link and the href is, you just go directly to the CSS folder and then main.css, like that, okay? So this is already in the directory of your public folder. So think of this like the public HTML of your server, right? That's that's what it means, how you access them. So you're not gonna go out there to Laravel and back in here or something, okay? Just go to that, we'll take you right there. And maybe again, we'll revisit this later in the future. Now inside the resources, you see there's another CSS and another JavaScript. So these are not the same as you put in the public. These are only available in the backend uh, to use, right? So that's, there's a distinction between the two. So that is the view you saw on the browser. Now, what happens when you run the application is that it will go into the app folder here. Okay, the app folder is really important. It will intercept inside the HTTP uh, directory. There's an HTTP, there's a console. We're not going to do console here. Uh, we do the HTTP, we use everything in the browser. Okay, your HTTP protocol goes here. Um, inside here, you have controllers, you'll see here, and then there's some models, and of course, you have your views, and there's a controller, right? So M, M, uh, view is your view M, V, C, okay? So model view controllers, and that's how you separate your files. And so, um, so when the app runs, it goes in here to your app folder, it goes into your HTTP, um, inside here, uh, in, the provi in the providers here, you have a route provider here, goes in here, look for your route, right? Inside the web here, and it goes to the web page, right? It finds that, you know, the process is actually um, pretty straightforward. I don't remember exactly how it goes, but it, it loads in here and it will then uh, launch the uh, index inside your public file, this index here. Okay, it will go in here as well and then, you know, load your files in here, bootstrap the application, it builds the uh, fetch, fetch the view and then returns the view and then sends it to the browser and it terminates the view. So it, it does this every time. We load a new page, it's gonna come in here, right? And look at the pattern, go through the route, find a pattern. Once it finds it, launch the view, whatever the view is, and then returns it and then sends that view to the browser and then it terminates that request, okay? This is the whole cycle here. Okay, so um, that is 
I mean, again, very high level. As you start coding, you get you get used to it a little bit better. But most of your time will be spent inside this web file, creating you know routes uh, inside the uh, views folder, creating templates, um, and do other stuff in here as well. Like API, we'll do that later. Um, but yeah, I just want to give you an overview of what it looks like inside here. So we have the controllers in here. We'll do this later. The Rain Simple controller have, we'll look at the uh, route service file here. We're not going to touch this unless you want to create your own uh, groups of routes. We have only two here, the API and the web. And our example, we'll be focusing mainly on the web for now until later, maybe we'll do the API. Okay, so that is pretty much it. And then in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and create more routes and templates and render some data to the view.